I know who you are. I, I, I know who you are. I, I, I know who you are. Wait, you the guy that used to talk all reckless. It sounds like me. Yeah, all up on my necklace. Come on now, knock it off. You thought it was me and you, but you got it backwards. You must be dyslexic. Uh, don't flatter yourself. You're mad at yourself. I think you're models and singers just as bad as yourself. Listen, I ain't seen you since years ago. Now you're trying to give it to me like, there you go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I'm still not having it. No, 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 no. I, I, I'm still not having it. Yo, yo, yo. I, I'm still not having it. So, so, so. I, I'm still not having it. Yo, yo, yo. I, I, I'm still not having it. No, 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 no. I, I, I'm still not having it. Whoa, whoa. Three decades of hip hop, the first brother that I know of, you know, they, they be trying to kill you. All the hip hop historians out there. Now, nah, actually, in 1487, you understand what I'm saying? For well, my well, and to my knowledge, the, the first brother that gave us positive hip hop and gave us the the male and female complementary force. You understand? When they, listen, in, in, in the form and fashion, I did it. You know, and that pure. Form and fashion, I did it. No one has done that. Okay. No one. Well, I was the first one to do it and do it the best. But in that pure fashion, in, in the purest form, right. that's that. I was the one who did that. Well, so let's give it up for the man who just introduced himself while he was making it plain. I needed him to make it plain. We on we on Nas God Day. We got a whole bunch of stuff going on. So let's give it up for the man, the myth, the legend. Who still got the skills that have paid the bills? You understand what I'm saying? Right, you gotta get three paid though. Gotta deep, get paid though. Three decades deep from the birthplace of hip hop for this time, the man, the myth, the legend, positive K, aka Paz K, aka positive knowledge of lie in the building. You understand what I'm saying? Peace, man. Peace, peace to the God. God, war the devil, yes sir. <laughs> got my. Go ahead, guy. No, no, I was just saying, I'm glad to, glad to see you in the building. Glad to see you still rocking. Glad to see you still making music, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and doing your thing and keeping keeping the skills, you know what I mean, apparent and, and, and relevant in, in the game. You know what I mean? And so I appreciate love that, as we say over here. I appreciate it. It's, it's, it's well received. 
I'm here today. I'm rocking the uh, Positive K 30 year anniversary shirts. Okay. You know? That's right. So go to your shop, shoppositivek.com. You know, go to shoppositivek.com. Get your shirt. Get your Positive K shirts. Get everything right. you need to have. What you may got to do with me shirts to make it happen. Shirts. Got to get it done. Shirts. Get your shirts, baby. Get your shirt. Got the long sleeves. We got the sweaties. We got the hoodies. Got the, yeah, come on. Let's, 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 we, 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 we across the board. We across, across the board. We know how to do this. <laughs> We, 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 we introduced the game to people. You don't know understand? Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have a song. <laughs> pardon me. You have a song that uh, uh, has trans <laughs> transcended just in the music. It, it you know, it, it became speech, became a, a, a some people's way of life. You know what I'm saying? Dang, they dang. walk up to them. You know, you look good. I got a man. What your man got to do? <laughs> Me. Okay. This is the first thing that you say at that <laughs> point in time. You know what I'm saying? How you know, man, how does it feel to be an icon in this in the speech, not just the rhyme, but the speech of a culture? You understand what I'm saying? Like you 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 because it makes a person think, you know what I'm saying? And the song was dope too. So, what does it feel like to be like that? It feels, it feels, it feels great. You know, like I said once again, it's, it's well received. Um, I appreciate it from the bottom of minds. You know, and, and you know, and it's it's done wonderful for me throughout my years. You know, right. as far as me, you know, taking care of my family. You know, as far as me, um, taking care of my person. You know, my my mentality. You know, for me, for me to, to build and grow as a as, as a man. You know, it's it's wonderful, you know. But uh, like you said, there's people who try to take it apart and say, hey, well, you know, he was stalking. You know, <laughs> he was, you know, he was he was a predator, you know. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, so, like, you know, Crazy you, know like, you just can't, you know, you just can't win with people, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> but now right. uh, it feels good. It was, it was very artistic. Um, they had it dubbed, I think Bob Mazic magazine <laughs> has it dubbed as one of the, I think it's one of the top 15 duets best of all time. Right. I think I'm, I'm on top of um James Brown and Lil Thomas. It wow. takes two to make a thing go right. You know man. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know, and it was crazy, man. The, the Queen of Richard Franklin, she loved it. You know what I'm saying? Um, it passed. It it it, it crossed over the genre of right. music. It crossed over the age groups. You know, and it crossed over time frame because it's still bangers to this day. I mean, yeah. it, it yeah. plays all over the world every day. You know? Yeah. yeah. I love and it. And it made a lane. It carved out a lane for that to be cool. And then, you, know, and, you know, you know, but just, just like everything else, you know, everybody wants to do what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? So everybody jumps on in and try to do that. Like, yeah, you know, I'm doing this. No, you know, you're doing me, but have at it. You know? <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. Well, you're you know, doing me, but have at it. You know, have at it. I, I, think, I don't want people to miss the importance of the balance. You know what I'm saying? Like, like knowledge uh, of born Allah was saying, you know what I mean? You gave in, like you said, you, you gave a raw, a clear aspect on both sides. And you didn't, it wasn't a, no, nah, you listen, it's my song. So you got to make me look. You know, no, it wasn't one-sided. It wasn't one-sided at all. It definitely wasn't. And, and, and that that was the, really the eye opener to to really a lot, of, a lot of dudes. Like understand her perspective when you step into her and she got a man. You know what I mean? What they got to do? Here's where, here's where, here's where, here's where we get. Here's we get to the power, you know. It comes down to it. It's like you know, I had to understand both perspectives. I wrote the whole song, right, you know what I'm right, right. <laughs> so I'm giving it to myself. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now that I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm, I'm, I'm like, but I'm, I'm, I'm painting the picture. Just like you, you, you get a picture painted, you see it. All you gotta do is back in that day. All you gotta do is walk, walk through Harlem in, in 93, 94, or 91, or you know whatever. You walking through Harlem, all you had to do is look at it. You seen the conversation. You seen yeah. the verbiage, you seen what it was, you know? Yeah. If, if you stop and did the knowledge, or the, the visual itself was, but that was that was the, the interaction. You know, there was no social media, you know, jumping somebody DM and all of that and seeing somebody, yeah, follow me everyone. And then you go home and hey, what's up, honey? You know, I'm just gonna say what up. You know, <laughs> nah, you had to you had to step to your you had to step to that. You had to you had to be confident in yourself. You had to approach a person and say, Well, how you doing? What's going on? Uh uh, you know, and and, and it, 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 it was it was you know. It's a wisdom's job not to not to make it easy for you, right? You know, especially at that time because that was that that was the understanding. It was like, oh, you just don't talk to anybody on the street, you know. Right. Yep. So you know, you you had you had to, you had to be charming. You had to have that lingo to, to break that down. 
you know, and that's what it was. And then you had to be able to hold him. Hold on, let me go to the car and get the pen. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right, right. There was work involved. You know. You know, yeah, you had, you, know, you had to hold on, hold on. And then it was like, well, you know, she had girlfriends. Come on, girl, you had to put your your, your peoples on it. Yo, right. Hold so, them up for a minute. Let me right, let me right, finish right. this. Your you know? friends, you know? my friends, and we can be friends, right? Yeah, it was, yeah. It was teamwork. You know. Yeah, I, I, listen, I I don't I don't play. I done played the uh, 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 the wingman numerous times. Oh, you, you know what I'm saying? You, you took one for the team many nights. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, sometimes you got to do that. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey man. Hey, man. Hey, for your hey, like sometimes you got to take one for the team. That's what it is. Everybody, everybody got to do it. You know what I'm saying? That's a fact. That's a fact. No doubt. So for you, what's the most difficult thing you've ever had to learn in your life? We play still not having it. You understand what I'm saying? They, they, what What was it like to team back up with like after so many years? You see what I'm saying? From your monumental stage to the, the shift and some of the twisted turns in the game to come back and recreate something that y'all y'all had half of y'all had it. You see what I'm saying? To redo it again and you know break it down again. Well, I will tell you like this, man. You know, um, uh, I spoke to him maybe about a couple of weeks ago. You know, because I want to try and, uh, and finish up some things that we were supposed to do. But I'll tell you this, man, you know, uh, one thing I know is the fact, you know, I know I'm, I know I, I, I know in my heart I'm a talented individual. I know that she's a talented individual. But I do notice that together we got a chemistry that no one can. You can't buy it. You can't put it in the bottle. You can't learn it. You can't you can do anything you want to do to it. We have chemistry that when we get together, man, that's just that's just what it's going to be. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was, you know, it's, some things are just meant to be, and what's for you is for you. And when, 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 when Light and myself get together, it's magic. Right. Now, I mean, it's no illusion. It's, it's, it's actual facts, but I'm just saying, this is something right. special happens. Hey. <laughs> so I got a two part joint for you. Behind the scenes, cats will know you was on the road with Kane forever. You see what I'm saying? So that's the first part. What was it like being on the road with Kane forever? You see what I'm saying? And then we are now as born day today. You know what I'm saying? Hey. That with that with that reemergence where you pull you pull out the pies K on us, or you know, where are they now? You understand what I'm saying? And hey. you know, what's the what's the backstory for that? You know what I mean? Um, you, you can share I'll a little this, memory man. with Kane. I tell everybody, man, I tell, listen, every interview will always be the same. Was for Big Daddy Kane, I probably would be sitting here, you know, talking with you good brothers right now. You know, uh, Kane was the person when First Priority Music wasn't treating me fairly. He was the guy that came and said, yo, man, hey, yo, yo, God, I mean, you, you going, you going, you going, you going to take this? <laughs> you know, I'm like, man, I'm like, I'm, I'm ready to suck it up. Like, you know, I'm trying to make records, you know? He's like, God, please, oh, this is brutal. You know what I'm saying? You can't be. <laughs> so, uh, you know, he, uh, you know, he, he let me see the whole thing in the, the full picture. You know, he, uh, one day was a, he called the uh, promoter. Uh, her name was Carol Lewis, and she gave me the whole the whole rundown. Like, yeah, they they don't really want you out there. You're getting a little too much exposure, and da 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 da, and, 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 and yada yada. So they hit me with the, with the thing like, you got to go home. We can't really afford it right now, and we can. We'll bring you back out. And Kane was like, look, he said, look, God, you ain't got to go home. You know, I mean, because Kane, it really was Kane's shot. It was well, really it was it was Kumo D's. I go to work tour. But Kane was that Kumo D. Don't get don't get it wrong. That's my top five. One of my top five. But Kane was really like the the headliner of the show. Everybody was seeing Kane. Kane was the hottest thing on the planet. You know, Mo D was the hottest firecracker too. But Kane was Kane was it. You know, um, and, and Kane said if I, he wanted me to go out there, I was going out. They wasn't gonna say no to Kane. You know, so that's what it was, man. And I went out and I went back the next day, and everybody was like, "Oh, Paz, you here?" I'm like, "I got no rap." You know, don't, don't not talk about it. You know, it's not, don't, don't, don't do that. You know, what I'm saying? Right, right, don't right. act like we, you know, like, like, you know, you know, you know, y'all know what y'all did. You know, so I, I, I kept it pushing with Kane. Kane said, get on the tour bus, man, you know, and he said, yo, man, you, well, we got a free room, man, you crash in it, you know. I said, all right, well, that's what it is. And that's what I did, man. And uh, Kane put me in the studio, man, and with, out of his own money, with his, out of his own pocket. And, and, uh, and, 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 and I made great records, man. And, he took me on the road, me, myself, and Jay Z, and introduced me to, to, to his audience. And um, that's positive K. That's what happened. Dope story. That's real. Okay. 
That is real. So I'm, I'm going to ask before the God go. I know he got a couple of joints for you. Um, the shift into comedy. You did so many things in, in the career. So either they know or they don't know. You see what I'm saying? The shift into comedy. I took my shit, <laughs> Like what, what does it look like, you see what I'm saying, for you? Because I know you've been tearing stuff up around the country. You see what I'm saying? And you did it through pandemic. You see what I'm saying? So I rocked the whole pandemic. That was my time. Put it just that. Well, I was going to say, you know, how were you able to maneuver in the space where a lot of creatives was at a standstill? You see what I'm saying? And continue to, to come out, but not only come out, but come out on time. Well, I'll put it like this, man. You know, um, you got you got you got to realize the opportunity when you see it, man. There was a there was a void. There was nothing there. Um, the music business it has a definite shift right now. Um, if it wasn't probably for Rock the Bells, you probably wouldn't hear anything from anybody right now. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's that's just that's just uh, the bottom line. So to be a, a, a hip hop artist, you know, um, be a hip hop pioneer, you know, it's it's, it's kind of dismal. So everybody's trying to find a, a new lane to try to reinvent themselves and or incorporate themselves into something, you know. And I knew to myself, I said, you know, I said, man, look, I was doing comedy and nobody. I mean, when I started doing it, I started seeing some heads pop up, like, oh yeah, well, you know, I'm gonna do the same thing, huh? you know. And I, you know, I had a little feelings for a minute, like you know, I'm saying, like, you know, uh, why you doing? I mean, can, can a brother do something on, on his own, you know? <laughs> can I just have something, you know? <laughs> But but you know I thought about it and I seen it and I and a, and, a, and a comedian friend of mine dope dude I call him my sensei his name is Zoo Man Miller he said um he said let me tell you something he said the comedy stage will purify itself <laughs> he said he said people see it and they're very intrigued to want to do it but let them go ahead let them just go ahead and they'll find out what this is you know this is not a game this is not a joke. And it's not really a lucrative thing unless you, unless you have a, uh, 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 you one of the top tier comedians, right. you know. I mean, don't get me wrong; it's, it has, it's very rewarding to me, you know. But I'm not chasing it for finances, you know. Um, I, you know, I've, 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 you know, I've, I've done very well in my career, and I'm, I'm pretty happy where I'm at, you know. I mean, I always, I always want to better myself, but I'm not chasing the comedic thing for, for, for. For, for 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 cash and anybody who knows about that's what it is. So people see it like, okay, yeah, yeah, he, he get money over there. You know, <laughs> it's like, okay, come on, come on over. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, I can get on stage and do a do a 15 minute show and get 10k. You know, uh, you got to go on stage and do an hour and a half if you a headliner, and they might give you about four or five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> so don't get it uh, don't get it twisted. You know, unless you play in the marinas and, and you're, the, you're, the, you're the Cat Williams or your Mike Epps, you know, or Tiffany Haddish, you're one of them people, man. You're not getting that cash is not coming in, you know. So, um, but and, and there's a million and ten. There's more comedians there that there want to be rappers out here. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Matter mm -hmm. of fact, you got comedians that want to be rappers, <laughs> <laughs> or you got want to be comedians who want to be rappers. <laughs> Right, right, right. So, so it's 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 flush, man. To the window of the wall out here in the comedy world, but um, it feels good for me, man. You know, I did it because, like I said, it, it's a challenge for me, and I think it's just a the energy, the transference of the same the energy is the same as getting on stage and rocking the microphone. It's just me and the mic, you know. Um, you got a little, you got a little fallback with music, and that's my little a little, a little privilege for me because if things get a little soft, I say, you know what, let's do this real quick. <laughs> I'll right. come back to some music real quick and then come back and tell some more jokes. You know right. what I'm saying? But um, but yeah, man, I get up there, man, and and, and it was a love hate relationship with comedy in the beginning because you know um, the one thing you know is the common denominator, it's the fundamental fact that is known in comedy is you're gonna eat a biscuit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know, and coming from coming from rap. Come from the hip hop world. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, we got, you know, we, you know, we, we strong on, you know, on who we are. You know, we are. No, no, no. I don't know. I don't. I don't, I don't do whack. No, right. I don't do whack right. sauce. We don't do that. Right. You know, right. I don't do that. But you know what? You can't fight that. You can't stop that. Sometimes it's, it's a bad room. Sometimes it's just a, a, not a good crowd. Sometimes it's just not the night. Sometimes it's the night you got to eat the biscuit. And you got to learn that you how to eat a biscuit. You know, right. what I'm saying it's a lesson right. that you had to learn. You got to learn it. You know what I'm saying? There's no comedian out there who, who who's worth being a comedian who did not eat a biscuit. You know right. what I'm saying? And you right, gotta right. eat a biscuit. 
Now that's how you handle your biscuit and what you do. You know, so um, you know, I would, I eat a biscuit. My first biscuit, I stopped. I was like, Maggie, man, come on, man, I ain't gonna be anybody gonna be you know clowning me, man. I can't be man, I ain't eat no biscuit. I ain't get heckled or booted. Now just I didn't perform up to my level. Right. You know, I, it was I, so I, funny I, how I ate my first biscuit. I went out with my man, talented comedian, and he had me come out, and I and I, and, I, and I won. I won in the first like five minutes, which all he wanted me to do was like about five five minutes, and I went longer because I was getting hit in the laughs. So, so they was waving, they was waving the red light at me, and I'm like, I thought that was like, yo, you doing good, like you know, they, like they was licking shots for the kid and stuff, you know. Well, that means get off stage. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. I was like, what? I was like, what are you a sniper? What are you doing? What are you? Doing? <laughs> the people was laughing, but I'm like, they're like, yo, money. They telling you to get off the joint, and I'm like, ah, man, you know. Tommy, yeah, yeah. Hey, okay, I was on with Tommy Davidson, Lunell, I think Joe Claire. You know, I'm, I'm on there, I'm on stage with monsters, right? So right. Tommy's like, hey man, why are you on stage so long, man? I'm I'm the headliner, me, but you you were doing good. You both get it right for me. Well, just get it right for me. And <laughs> <laughs> Tommy wants you to sit your little <laughs> I got it now, okay? It's cool. You know? He's like, yeah, man, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, you 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 you, 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 you both set it up for me. That's all the world, just set it up. But that's that's what Tommy Davis told me, man. It was funny. Big time, my man, Tommy, the comedian, he gave me my first gig in comedy, my first joint. You know. Go ahead, son. Pardon. <clears throat> no, it's all good. Um, so, are you doing more tours in comedy? Or are you doing more tours music wise now? I tell you this: uh, since I started doing the comedy thing, the, the music tours really kicked kicked up a lot. You know, wow. um, yeah, yeah. matter of fact, even I did I did a show in Pittsburgh. Matter of fact, but it was the first time I did comedy at a, at a rap show. It was uh, it was Slick Rick, myself, Big Daddy Kane, Jazzy Jeff, um, Slick Rick, Big Daddy Kane, Jazzy Jeff, and Rock Kim on wow. the show. And um, after my set, man, I just I, I just went into it. You know, I wasn't going to do it because it's kind of hard to get a rap crowd to get into a. I laughed the mode, you know what I'm saying? When, when when you got that kind of energy going on, you know, but I just kind of like slid right into it. And they really wanted me to to to, to do comedy at the show, period. You know, yeah. instead of instead of the set. So, but I wound up doing both. And it was great. It was really great, man. It was a good show. It was good, it was good, it was good response. Shop to Pittsburgh. They they gave me lots of love. Um, I'm John Moskowitz over there, at Universal Attractions. Thanks for having me up. Um, it was dope, man. I mean, and they laughed, man. And, and that's when I knew I said, yo, this is what I want, want it to be. You know, right. I just don't want to be in a comedy club because, because you know what? It's, it's, it's hard. It's, if you're doing comedy in the spot, in the space, sometimes people don't come. They, I didn't come to laugh. I came to listen to some music, you right. know? And then you go to the comedy right. joint and you try to do a little bit of music. I mean, I didn't come to dance. I came to laugh. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So if I can find a little medium where I can do that kind of thing, man, it, it, it's dope, you know? Maybe I shouldn't tell what, what I want to do because, like I say, once I do something, everybody. <laughs> now here comes the crowd. Everybody's running down to, hey, you know. Hey, man, you you know, you just got to trademark it. I mean, trademark it now. Look, no, no, it's okay. already on the print. Let me tell you something. Like, like my homie Zuman Miller told me, uh, DC Curry told me, he said, man, that's, that stage don't love nobody. <laughs> so, so I don't care. Who you think you are, where you from, or what you do, that stage ain't got no love for nobody. It don't love me. That comedy stage is, is as cold as, as as the baddest chick in the club. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Trust me, you don't want to play with that stage, and it's going to let you know if you don't respect it. You know, if you don't respect the craft, you don't respect the work. You know, I never cut comedians. I never, I stayed in the pit with guys, man. You know, I stayed in there, you know, I waited my turn. I was in the line with everybody else. Everybody said, oh, positive case, I'm going to wait my spot. And I did that, man, and you don't cut it, you know, because then comedians don't give you no respect, man. And, right. and you feel that energy when you walk in the room, too. People don't like you, you know. I'm like, ah, oh, man. But, you know, um, I hired a lot of comedians to come on my show. I work with a lot of comedians on my show. You know, sometimes some nights I win, some nights I lose. But that's every that's every comic, you mm -hmm. know. There's no comedian out here that tells you, yo, hey, man, I kill every night. You know, so it's what it is. But I, I enjoy it, man. You know, I'm definitely, that's going to be my, uh, that's where I'm going. You know, I used to always say that's my side chick. You know, rap that rap is my main broad, but you know, that's my side girl, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I love her, though. 
<laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> right. You mean I ain't used to love, her. I still love her. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right, right. So let me ask this question for my sister Jazzy J, something for the culture. She said, she said, ask Positive K, what does he think about hip hop? How it shifted and changed over the years from storytelling to drill music? Oh man. Um well, that's a two-part question. That's a three-part question. He said from, from hip-hop back in the day to today, and then from today to drill music. So, because it's not all just drill music. All right, so, so okay, so, yeah. Um, I think, man, and I say this often also, I say it's a double-edged sword, man. It's a double-edged sword. Um, when we came up and we were doing music, man, you know, all we had was two turntables and a microphone, you know? Somebody, some DJ had a nice little collection or whatever it was, and we might have had, uh, you know, a little drunk uncle, you know, that uh that played the bass, or somebody played the the sax, or <laughs> somebody played the sax or something, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's what that was going to be the musical quality of your record, you know what right. I'm saying? I'm pretty right. sure that Pete Rock probably had somebody that was in the family that, you know, you know what I'm saying? Somebody right. played the horn in there, you know. And, <laughs> And you know, and Rock Kim, he comes from a jazz family. He, I think, what when his, his pops, when his brother played the bass, he had them crazy bass bass lines, you know. So, I mean, that, that's what we had, you know. And whatever you had, you used to the best of your ability. But um, but yeah, man, it, it, you know, I love what we did. I thought we were so creative. I think we were kind of limited musically because we had to, we had to, we had we had to go sit in studios and, you know, and and and. We had these big boards that a lot of guys didn't know how to work, and the guys who knew how to work it weren't weren't hip hop acclimated. You know, you had these guys from Long Island, Ron Conkama, Long Island, engineering your session, and you're like, oh, you know, come on, damn, you know, like, <laughs> you know, man, yo, but sonically that doesn't work, and it's like, no, nah, man, but I need that, I need that to hit, I need that to be in your face, you know, and you got to fight for what you want back then, you know. But um, I loved our creativity, man. I love our, our, our team cohesion, how everybody pulled in. And I love the uniqueness, you know, and, and, and the sincerity that we put in our records. Um, nobody ever wanted to sound like anybody else. You know what I'm saying? It was like, yo, oh, if you had a title that was similar to somebody else, you're like, man, I got to trash that. That song, I, got, I can't use that song. If, if, right. if somebody had the same title or the hook was a little similar, we used, they used the same beat. It was like, ah, I don't even want to use that, you know? Yep. Even if that was one of your, if that was your next single that was coming out, and and somebody beat you to it, you like ah, I don't even want to use it now. Yeah, want to use it now. You know, it changed. It changed, and you know, it's like uh, after I started doing, what I was doing. Everybody wanted to be positive K. You know, everybody when Mace did what Mace was doing, everybody wanted to be Mace. Um, when Biggie was, you know, the top of the world, everybody was sounding like Busy. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, baby, baby, baby. Everybody sounded like Biggie. You know what I'm saying? Eminem hit, you know? Then every white rapper in the world came out and wanted to make records. And everybody had, oh, this is the next one right here. So, you know, it was that it was that copycat thing that, that really disturbed me. You know what I'm saying? I, I didn't like it. And I quote, uh, uh, what's my man? Um, um, what's, the, what's, what's the comedian way back in the day? Charlie Chaplin. Charlie Chaplin said, he said, you know, he said, he, he said, uh, 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 invitation, they say it's flattering. But, you know, he said, I got to a Charlie Chaplin contest. He said he came in third. You know, what I'm <laughs> so so you understand what I'm saying? It's like, it's like, it's like I'm going, I'm in the, I'm, I'm a dumb dude, positive cage. I'm not winning. Somebody's winning over me. They're right. doing me. You know what I'm saying? So right, it's right. crazy. That, that's where that got a little nasty. Um, but today, uh, I, I think it's a it's the other side of the sword is this now is that technology has really changed and it's so different. Um, uh, uh now. When we didn't have dope producers, you got these young guys who who are who are well accomplished engineers now. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And they and, and not being engineers, most of these guys play two or three instruments. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or they can lay a bass line and a horn and hit down like it's nothing in seconds. You know, um, technology. You can drop a song, record a song, and drop it in the same day. Mm -hmm. You know, incredible. You know, we didn't have that. Have that. Have that. Have that, uh, that liberty. Um, and, and and like I said, the, the, the technology, the engineering, and you don't got to go to the studio. You can do it and you can, you, can, you can see a little closet space and you can, you can go to, and you know, well, before we was doing it, we had to make sure everybody was asleep 
Yeah, yeah, you had to run the wire in the bathroom to record American vocals in the bathroom. Right? Now dudes do it right there, man, right in front of your face. You can do it, you can do it with your laptop, you know. You can walk, you can do it in the hotel room, you know. So so that's great and that's wonderful. I just don't think the creativity is has the has the same has the same energy that 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 my era had. Right. But um right. I don't like to separate nothing, man. You know what I mean? The energy what they have is their energy and it's for their time. So I can't, you know, I don't comment on it. I'm just saying, you know, um, from what I hear, what I like and with my taste, I just don't feel the, the, the sincerity in the lyrics anymore. You know what I'm saying? You know, I don't, you know, uh, I'm going to tell you I'm better than you. I'm not going to talk about me putting it, you know, putting the AK in your face and <laughs> and making it a closed casket. That don't make me better than you. You know right. what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you right. why I'm better than you. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's that. But, you know, I guess it's different terminology and time changes and things change, but you know, but that's like I said, it's a double-edged sword, man. I think they got, they got a lot of good things that, that happens here. I think if you can get some of these dope producers these days to go back and mess with some of the OGs, man, I think he, man, you got some real great records right now. Yes, sir. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, shout out to my my squad, the Vengeance. Everybody over 40 years old, 45 mm -hmm. years old. Vengeance. You know shout out to the Vengeance. You know what I'm saying? And and and, and we got a mixtape out now called the Red Nine. <clears throat> right. But the whole aspect of it is, you know what I mean, taking tracks that people are familiar with, but giving yeah. it a, a brand new song, brand new flavor, yeah. and doing it at this age. To yeah, remind man. you, like, if you can still speak, you can rhyme, bro. What is you doing? What you mean you got to stop doing what? Yeah, I don't man. understand none of that. I, no, I don't get it either. You know, I don't get it either. I mean, I just recently dropped uh, two songs. I really, I go dance stores right now, but I just start pushing them yet. Um, I, that starts in about two weeks. But, um... Uh, a song called Get It Done, another song called Nobody. Uh, what I'm doing, I'm emulating the old school 12 uh, single. Remember the singles back in the days? Yo. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And then you had versions of the songs and whatnot. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm emulating the old school single, man. So, you know, everybody want to do an EP. You know, I just think that right now people want to people don't want to listen to more than two songs right now. You know, and if people are dropping 30 cuts, 50 songs, you know, double albums. And there's only really two songs that stand out to people. You know, and people attention span, people are gonna sit there and listen to 50 records, 30 right. records. I I don't have time in the day for that. I don't think nobody else does, you know. And I um I gotta drive an hour. It you know, not, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, if you're going, yeah, if you're going to, yeah, if you go, you know, you're driving from coast to coast, you know, I can understand that, you know, popping in and you riding, but like but again, the it's the the, the, the thoroughness of 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 a, of a long form um um presentation. Oh man. So free Frank. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. Yeah, you know, uh 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 somebody doing doing a double album, you know, it might be, you know, but it's not gonna be with those two bangers you got. You know, right. it's not gonna be like the cameo album where they did eight songs and you listen to eight songs like ah after the one after another one. It's not gonna be like the Michael Jackson album, right? You know. And even Mike had a couple of songs like you know I like Siberia Girl, but I was like you know that wasn't uh it wasn't Billy Jean, right. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you mean. So, you know, um, yeah, I so you know, mean, you know, I just think that I'm taking steps to give it to people. Bump, let them accept. But you know what it is? Hey, take one, take two. Hey, take one, take two. And we'll see where we go as far as the long form goes in a minute. You know, yeah. definitely, I'm definitely an album is coming out in 2023. But you know, I'm just dropping little things here and there to get where feel where I'm at and see what people like and don't like. According, according to the uh, 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 critics and according to the professionals in the streaming game and, and nowadays in promotion, what you're doing is exactly how it's supposed to be done. You should there be you got one or two songs, you know what I'm saying? And and then you mean pushing that as much as you possibly can. Yeah, yeah. Get yeah. everything you can from that and let that build whatever you're about to do somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot, of, I mean, a lot, a lot, a lot of new artists I see. You know, they, they, they got this sixty day expectation. They don't right. hit the, they don't hit the radio right. Right. in sixty days. Like, oh, the song is dead. You know, oh, that's all. I mean, I got, you know, I got some new stuff. It's like your money. You didn't even work that one yet. You know, I remember Russell Simmons telling me one time. I said, you I don't think it's a hit record. He said, how many spins did it get? He said, well, if it didn't get over three thousand spins a week, how do you know it's not a hit record? And I'm like, point taken. You know what I'm saying? Point taken. You know, but um, I got a man. One of the biggest songs of my career. Um, that song died two times and rose on the third year. 
<laughs> it, it didn't become a hit automatically. Right. You know? And the song right. kept being worked, kept being worked. It died at black radio. It died at street uh, at, uh, on, on, on the urban scene. Um, you know, it died at college radio. Then it went, it got, it got, it got, it got service to the pop stations. It took off and then it got reserviced all over again, like it was a brand new record. And everybody was like, well, where was this at? You know? <laughs> so, you know, these things happen. You can't give up on, on, on a project. You know, it's because somebody got you on a time frame. You know, the only way to work that record and perform the record, which artists don't do these days. Another thing, too, they don't do. They don't get on stage and, and work the record unless it has a video, unless it's played in rotation. You know, I can't wait to get on the stage and be like, hey, I got this new joint that's dropped. I want to give you all the verse right now. Check it out. Fine. You know, Gladys Knight does that to this day. Charlie Wilson does it to this day. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, seasoned artists know that you use that opportunity when you're in front of an audience to, 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 to give them something new all the time. Exactly, exactly. That's real. I know you only got a little bit of time left, so if you got a final thought for the family, you know, shout outs, acknowledgements, are you still um, blessing people with features? You know, whatever you got going on, you know, with the fam, you know, with the comedy scene, with everything, find a word for positive. Well, I'd like to say, man, you know, um, I tell everybody um, when you're young and you try to do what you do, follow your dreams, but be passionate about your passion. Always be passionate about your passion. Everybody say they want it, they want it, but they ain't passionate about getting it. You know what I'm saying? So be passionate about your passion and get your education. You ain't gonna never, listen, ain't nothing corny about going to school, ain't nothing corny about working and paying your bills. And then if you gotta go to the studio after all that and you're tired, then go to the studio tired. If you're gonna do it and, you, and you're exhausted, then you do it exhausted because that's what you wanna do. Don't quit school, don't quit your job and say, oh, I'm gonna do this all day long. Now, work your job, go to school, and if you're gonna follow your dream and you're tired, then follow your dream tired. But I guarantee you, it'll be more worthwhile to you in the long run when things do come together. You know, uh, follow me, positive underscore K underscore, uh, Instagram and Twitter, um, official positive K on Facebook, positive K Brandon on Facebook. You know, just check me, man. Follow me, I follow you back. And I end every video, every interview, I say this. Fellas, if you friend request me, please have your shirt on. Don't be friend requesting me with your shirt off. All right, we ain't gonna do it. We ain't gonna do the shirt off thing. You know. Yeah. You know. Not only will I, I will block you forever. You know what I'm saying? If you put your shirt on, he's like, hey, now you can't even come back. So, <laughs> I know you're in shape. You've been working out. You've been doing your curls. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was. You might be a part-time stripper. I don't know what you're doing, but don't friend request me with your shirt off. He so said he's, he's still not having it. You know what I'm saying? He's still, still not, not having it. That's right. right. In a couple of weeks for the new song, I get it done and nobody. I get it done. I spit it, son. I take it back to the days. I hit it. Run. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Much respect to you, brother. Thank you for your work. You know what I'm saying? We give out machetes. I'm giving you machete, man. Ah. That was for the dead. Machete for the living. You get a machete uh. for, for the living legend that you are. And for the icon in the word game in the culture. Thank you very much, my brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, this is Positive K on Do the Knowledge. And remember this legends of an era always stick together. Ow! And I'm out. <laughs> word. Yeah, yeah, Salute, yeah. Man. Salute. Yeah. So we got a treat. I do got the joint. We're going to play this joint on the way out. You understand what I'm saying? And for YouTube, we got his permission, okay? So shout out to Angela. Angela, <laughs> the suck. You understand what I'm saying? Be, you know they be bugging. Y'all like, just seen him. Y'all just seen him. <laughs> just seen him. Like, just seen him. Right, so we out, man. You understand? We're going to end off with this joint, man. Say something to the people, sir. Hey, man, we'd be right black. You know what I'm saying? Literally. Nine o'clock, nine is look, we here. So tune in. Nine, we here. Dr. Inky is coming on, coming through. Uh uh, and it's gonna be a blessing. Hey, man, we got something nobody else got on the show. You know what I'm saying? The uh, hard correspondent podcast, myself, son the great GR8, the God correspondent, and uh knowledge born Allah. Yeah, yeah, and, and brother Dr. Inky coming through. Get ready.